So, without any further ado, some of you have never, how many have never met Christopher? Okay, only a few. Uh, let me tell you a little story. This man comes from us, to us from, not from us. Well, I wish he was from us and with us. He's with us, but not here. Uh, from Woodland, Washington, the Promise Church, a happening church along the I-5 corridor. And uh, a church that is linked in destiny with this house for here and into the future. This man has traveled the nations. And last time he was here, he told you how he started out with a prophetic word. Somebody saying, you're going to travel the nations. And by the way, you're going to get a very large donation to travel the nations. And somebody else unknowing coming and giving $12,000 check to fund that ministry. Right in the beginning. So we're talking about a ministry of faith that lives in faith, by faith. And so let's welcome today to bring the word of the Lord, Christopher Donalds. <laughs> Pastor. Thank you. Are you guys excited? All right. We're going we're gonna to have a lot of fun today. Who's never heard me speak before? You're going to get really bored. So, you know, just get out your iPhones, your smartphones, start playing Candy Crush or trying to catch Pokemon. You know, Pokemon is just getting us ready for deliverance. You know, we Christians running around catching little demons. So that's, that's how I look at it. Um, one of them was on my friend the other day, and we caught it off of him. It was really good. You know, just trying to to quench the anointing, but we took care of that little Pokemon that was on him. It was it's funny. Um, if you've never heard me before, um, it's going to be fun. Uh, this, I, and I share this everywhere I go. I, it wasn't my idea to do this. It was God's idea. And when it's God's idea, it's really good. Um, so I, I grew up on a dairy farm and uh, was a fireman for a few years. And then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and set free and delivered. Um, and God told me the same time I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I got called to travel to the nations. And uh, so from that moment on that I went to Bible College at Portland Bible College. Anybody know where that's at? Went there, went there for a couple years at City Bible Church. And, uh, and then the story just takes off from there. I've been to Japan, I think, 12 times. Into China and the underground churches. Uh, Romania, Africa. Uh, Belize, the Philippines, Romania, Cambodia. I, I can't remember all the places that we've been and seen God just do incredible things. But today we're in Marysville yeah. Come on. Come on. in America. Come on. And, and I find that oftentimes we, we, we don't think that God moves as powerfully in Marysville or Woodland, Washington. By the way, in Woodland, we just got Carl's Jr. It's a really big deal. Like, we come from a very small town, okay? It's close to Portland, close to Vancouver. We got Taco Bell and Carl's Jr. W within six months of each other, we thought we were in heaven. I mean, just to give you an idea of how small our town is. Uh, but, you know, about two years ago, we took over a church of 70 to 80 hurting people. And in two years, God's grown it to 300 uh, thriving. We didn't know if we were going to be able to keep our building because we have a large building that's beautiful. Pastor Holly, you've seen it. We didn't know if we were going to be able to keep it. Our finances were incredibly tight. Uh, just praying and having faith and staying consistent uh, to where our finances have over doubled. Now we have the problem of figuring out what we're going to do with our money as we're giving. As our church in Woodland, Washington is giving over $2,500 to Cambodia a month to rescue kids from the sex slave industry. I mean, it's just amazing what God can do with a tiny church from Woodland, Washington. What can God do in Marysville with a church called Reset Church? And, and today I really sense that God wants to bring a word. I, I've been in a season at our church of talking about a completely different topic. And so I say, God, you really need to give me a word for Reset Church. And he spoke and gave me a word. And, and the title of the message um, would, be, would be Consistent Faith. Okay, and, and we're going to get into this in a couple minutes, but having consistent faith. Okay, 
And it can be small faith, but if it's consistent, it can move mountains. Okay? I guess, you know, God is kind of saying, God is asking, I have here in my notes, Reset Church to raise its expectation level. Okay? So I feel like God's going to plant a seed of faith and hope in your hearts to believe for more. Okay? In all areas of life. I know that your pastors, Pastor Jeff and Holly, um, they always dream big. Okay, so if God called you to this house, He has called you to dream big. Okay, and this morning during worship, you know, as I, as I go into places and God will speak to me about different houses, I'll, I'll hear specific things. And I felt like there was a few people this morning that needed to hear this. God is real. Okay, you got to catch this. God's real. Well, I know, Pastor Chris, I know that. There's a difference between knowing that in information and knowing that in experience. If you have the information knowledge that God is real, you can become very religious and say all of the right things, but never see a mountain move. But if you know God is real and you've experienced him and you've seen him and you've, you walk outside at night and I just turned 30 on Sunday, and, and I knew that God was going to give me a birthday present. So I got home late from going and watching the Star Trek movie, okay? Don't worry, I'm a Christian. You can watch movies. So I was watching the, God spoke to me a message out of it. It was just glorious. Um, anyway, I get home late at night, and I look up into the sky, and I see all the stars. And God says, do you want to know what your birthday present is, son? I said, yes, I do. He says, I need you to understand that if I created those stars... And that if this world that you're standing on is hurling around the sun thousands of miles an hour and you're stuck to a planet, I'm holding everything in place, okay? Catch this. Everything that if, if we were just a couple inches or, or, or miles away from where we are right now, we would freeze to death. Just a little bit closer, we'd burn to death. Okay, God is holding the solar system the world together. He's formed it. He's made it. He's created it. I look up into the scars and God says, my plans for you, son, are going to happen. Because if I can put all of this into motion and sustain all of this, I will sustain your life. You just need to stay consistent in believing me. It's God's job to uphold the promise. It's our job to protect the promise. Okay? You know, this guy named Abraham has this encounter with God and, 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 and God's making a covenant with him. And back in the day, they would split animals in half and the, the lower one would walk through the animal to say, if I don't uphold the covenant, I'm as good as dead. Okay, that, that's, that's how it was. So Abraham is making this covenant with God. Who passed through the animals? God did. So God is the one who created the covenant, who's made the promises, who, is, who has called out the destiny of Reset Church and the destiny of your church, and he will withhold the promise. But we have to guard it and protect it and stay, uh, and stay very uh, consistent in that process. Does that make sense? You guys want a couple stories before we get started? I like stories. I, I believe that you should have at least one testimony a day. Okay? You should have one testimony a day. If you don't have one testimony a day, go for one a week. If you don't have one a week, go for one a month. If you don't have one a month, get one a month. That's where I stand. So you should have one a day. I think we have like 15. I think I have 15 or 20 from yesterday alone because I've stayed consistent with my faith in believing God for the miraculous, okay? So as, uh, I, I, what, what I want to do is I want to share a story. I'm, I'm just going to share the story of Prairie High School. I got a lot of testimonies here, but I'm just going to talk about Prairie High School. Has anybody heard about how I got invited into a public school to preach the gospel? Okay, so some of you guys haven't heard this story. Okay, so I got invited into a Vancouver public school to teach a world religion class. Okay, 
So they have different people come in to represent different religions. I was asked to represent Jesus. What an honor. Right? So I came in after, after a few other people came in, and I had four classes to preach the gospel to four different groups of people. Okay? Required class. Not a Bible club. Requi required class. The first, the first one, you know, I was a bit nervous because I'm in a public school, and I just go through my information, and, uh, and I'm plowing through, and, 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 and not much really takes place in the first meeting except for I'm just preaching the word, and I'm telling them, listen, the difference between religion or any other religion in Christianity, which is relationship, is God came to us. Every other religion, we're trying to get to God, but with Christianity, God got to us. I mean, that's the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave. So I'm just breaking it down into just simple, the simplest form. And it was a good class. And then one of my friends came to me and said, Chris, uh, listen, you just need to go for it. And I said, challenge accepted. Iron sharpens iron, right? So class two starts. And uh, I begin to listen more for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is speaking 100% of the time. Amen. we got to catch this. And I say this all the time. He's speaking 100% of the time. He is just a radio frequency. We can tune in or we can tune out. A lot of times in life we get busy and it's not even bad things, but things just happen. And we tune out from what God's saying. We just need to tune in all the time and you'll speak all the time everywhere you go. So I decided, okay, I'm going to do a little bit better job tuning in. So second class starts. I begin to preach, talking about apologetics and talking about the power of God, telling a few stories about where, where I go and what I do, but then you have to prove it. So I said, there's somebody here who has pain in their left hand. Who is it? What's going on? And this kid raises his left hand up, and he has a cast, a soft cast, on his left hand. Okay? Now, the class kind of goes, well, you could have seen that. Okay? That's fine. I knew that I didn't see it. So we begin to pray. As I'm praying, okay, the bell rings. All right? And we prayed for a few other people, and some other things happened. I'm going to kind of fast forward through this. We then leave. I go to lunch in between my th the second and the third period. He comes into the psychology class that is meeting in the same room that I'm doing my classes in and runs through the door and says, where's Chris at? And stood in front of the psychology class and testified about how God had healed his hand. He's trying to make it hurt. So I get a text message. I'm going, oh, this is getting good. So I come back to my third period class. He comes running through the door. Okay? True story. There's about... 30, 40, maybe 50 kids max in this room. And uh, he comes running in and he says, you won't believe this. He gives me a huge hug. This guy prayed for me and God healed me. God told, told him about me. And, and the class is kind of going, yeah, right. This is all stage. Chris paid him money. And I said, nobody in here believes what just happened. It's okay. God's about ready to prove himself. I said, who in this room has a bad neck? It's in this specific part of their neck. Public school. Girl goes, it's me. It's me. Just boom, hand shoots up. Okay, we pray. I said, what just happened? She goes, the pain moved. Okay, everybody close your eyes. Everybody closes their eyes. I bind the spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. Be gone. She goes, opens her eyes. The pain's gone. And then revival broke out. I'm not joking. We started getting words of knowledge. I said, somebody in here has a sports injury due to playing, I forget what sport it was. Your right ankle is really messed up. Who is it? Boom, it's me. What can you do? I can't do this. Comes up front, gets radically healed. Then I say, somebody is here, and they have tennis elbow in their right elbow. And this guy goes, oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm not joking. You should see the letter that he wrote me that said, you changed my life when you knew about my elbow. I now know that God's real. And you go, what? A word of knowledge for an elbow? All Jesus did was heal the sick and cast out demons and occasionally walk on water and then multiply bread and then heal the sick, 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 heal the sick set people free. 
You don't know what one word will unlock in a person. So he gets healed, set free. Now we go into fourth period. Third period, when, when it was over, no altar call because the bell rings. Two girls rush the podium with tears in their eyes saying, I need to give my life to Jesus. I mean, I, I wish that you could, I could have it videotaped. It was, it was incredible. Fourth period comes, standing room only. The whole room was lined with people because they heard that somebody was preaching the gospel. They didn't do that for the Buddhist. They didn't do that for the, for, for the Jewish person that, that doesn't believe in the Messiah. They did that for Jesus. So we begin to preach, begin to, you know, begin to talk about how faith is not void of intellect and knowledge and understanding, that it all works together, and God begins to show up again. Migraine headaches healed. Backs healed. We're talking, they're trying to make them hurt as they're standing in front of the class, and the whole class is standing there going, what is happening? So then... Word spreads around campus, and they decide to do a, a, a big conference, okay, where, where it's like they're going to invite the whole school, and the Christian club's going to put it on. So I get asked to come and speak at this conference, and I don't know, were you there, David? I get up, and I just start preaching the gospel. And then at the end, they do an altar call. A bunch of people respond for salvation. And people that were saved in this public school, the Holy Spirit began to land on them, and they begin to speak in tongues, just boom. Holy Spirit's just landing on people in a public school auditorium on a public school campus. So it doesn't matter what, where you're at, what your atmosphere that you're dealing with. He who is in you is stronger than he who is in the world. Amen. Come on, that just makes me really excited. A public school. Salvation breaking out. Teachers hearing about it. I made the yearbook. You don't understand. I am in the yearbook. They put me in. I have a bigger part in their yearbook than in my own yearbook. I'm in the yearbook. It says Chris Donald came and left a deposit of the Holy Spirit. I'm not joking, lives were changed. What is said about you where you go? I'm just the dairy farmer that God decided to use. He takes the weak things to confound the wise. I just happened to have lived consistently in that area of my life for 11 years to the point where God now can say, yeah, I can use you because you've been consistent. Consistency is what it's all about. You guys ready to jump into this word? Yeah. All right. So the title of this message is Consistent Faith. And, and I got to be really careful because the scriptures I'm going to read could be preached a hundred different directions. So I'm going to stay on point. And if I start getting off talking about other things, David's going to throw something at me and uh, to keep me on track. Um. We need to do one more thing first to honor the Holy Spirit, right? We need to get some words of knowledge real quick. And then, because we have a few written down here that it's about him, it's not about us. So, uh, we felt strongly last night, God will speak to us words to David and I before we go into a church meeting. So God was already speaking about you guys, which is fun. Uh, yesterday, is Tony here? Where's Tony at? Tony disappeared. He's not here. He was here. Okay, well, anyway, God gave Tony a word that was five specific words of knowledge that were exactly for Tony. How's his back feeling this morning? He's feeling good? His back uh, began to get healed. I mean, and it was so specific. It's like, Tony, you've got pain in this part of your neck. Your ears pop. And he started to laugh as he goes, this is crazy. As God just knew specifically what it was and then gave him a word. So I'm excited to talk to Tony. But... God's going to do some things like that this morning. Um, is there somebody here? Th this one is, is a, a kind of a complex word, and I need you to be honest with me, okay? So sometimes we live with pain, and we don't realize that we don't have to. 
So if it, some of these things you might just have lived with for 10 years, uh, really, really think if this is you, okay? I believe it's one person. You've been having trouble with your right hand, okay? You've been having stomach issues as well. So stomach issues, issues with your right hand. Got a hand up in the back already. Okay, let me finish this word, all right? And you tell me if it's you, okay? Um, and there's been a, a struggle with anxiety or worry. Is that you? Okay. Uh, and also, does it go? Some, does the pain sometimes go into your left hand, but mostly your right? The left hand is it? Was it left thumb? In your into your left thumb or just left hand? Left. Okay, yeah, because I'm feeling that right now. But okay, so it's the left hand, and then right hand and then stomach issues and anxiety. Is that right? So God's going to come and he's going to set you free from anxiety today. It's, it's your day. Um, can you pass that baby off or is that, is that possible? I'd like you to come right up here. This is going to be awesome. Thank you, man in the green shirt. You're awesome. You guys ready to pray? So I feel like when, when God does stuff like this, it's because he knows you're brave and because he has a word for you so he can, he can call you out in front of the church. Oh, I'm sorry. What is it? Well, that's just going to be healed in Jesus' name. It's going to go away. Um, and the stomach issues are going to go away. I, I believe that that anxiety, that open door of anxiety, has just allowed some things to harass you. And we're going to break that thing off right now in Jesus' name. You're going to have soundness of mind is going to come back to you, and you're just going to have a, a much greater peace, and then you're going to have to go and, and, and still maintain your freedom, which is very important, but some of these things you've been struggling with are bondages that God's just going to break off of you, okay, which is going to be huge. So that anxiety, we're going to pray against that right now in Jesus' name. And I need to know, is there any pain in your hands right now? Okay, is there any pain in your stomach right now? No, so this is going to be something that we'll know will be proved out over time. Pain in your hands this morning. Okay, well, that's not going to come back anymore. Okay? And you're going to feel the Holy Spirit fall on you. Okay, and, I, and, uh, um, and then has there been any issue with the upper part of your back, kind of in between your shoulder blades? Yeah? See, so God will just keep giving words like this to prove to you that he knows you. Okay? So God's coming right now just to set you free. And to, and to set you on a new course, and then we're going to give you a prophetic word from God, okay? So, Holy Spirit, we just thank you. What's your name? Chantel. Father, we thank you for Chantel. We thank you, Lord, that you called her out today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here, and that where the Spirit is Lord, there is freedom. And, 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 and the Lord is Lord of your life. So, Father, we just come and pray against anxiety and fear and worry. We bind those things up in Jesus' name. We bind up any spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. We rebuke it right now. And we just say pain and infirmity leave Chantel alone in Jesus' name. All, all neck pain uh, that's been caused by this as well, we just rebuke that in Jesus' name. And we speak a release in Jesus' name. Amen. As we're praying, are you feeling anything? It does matter. It matters because it means Holy Spirit's falling on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna completely. It's gonna completely release. So just do this with me. Say, say, Jesus, I repent for partnering with anxiety. I say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me fresh. Fill me to overflowing. Come and be the Lord of every area of my life. In Jesus' name. Uh, David, do you have a word? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I have one. But if you have one as well, I'd like you to share it. There's Janisha. No, Chantel. That's Janisha. That's Janisha. I was thinking about you. Um, I just feel like the... The things that you've been worrying about, the things that you are concerned about, the Lord is going to come and he's going to show you that they're going to be taken care of so quickly, so perfectly, that he's going to show you that he has those in your hand. 
in his hands. Your hands are in his hands. You can hold on to him just like the the anxiety and some of the issues that have been going on have been centered in your hands. You're going to take his hands and he's going to hold you and he's going to guide you like his daughter, like a little girl who reaches up to her dad. And as he picks you up, those issues that you've been anxious about or been worrying about, the areas of concern are going to be just taken care of. They're going to be washed away. And he's going to say to you, don't worry. Just like every angel, every time he appeared to everyone throughout the Bible, he said, be not afraid. Be at peace. You are a daughter of peace. You are a citizen of the kingdom of peace. And peace means without worry. He's going to totally rule everything in life, in your life, and show you that there is no reason to be worried about any of it. Or, um, yeah. So I, I need everybody to get this, that when the creator of the universe, Jesus, appear, shows up, that you need to get how big it is. That if he called you out today, he was talking about you last night. So you are worthy. You are amazing. And the word that I had for you was very simple. You're going to move into a season of great confidence. Uh, a season of great confidence. And your step is going to be different. Your posture is going to be different. Because you need to remember this, that God has called you out today in this moment to, to, to set you free, but also for the body to see and to hold you accountable to the word that was spoken. So you're going to be used mightily by God. God bless you. Amen. Holy Spirit always messes up my preaching. I, you know, you say, Holy Spirit, you can do what you want. He says, well, I'll just take your speaking time, and then you've got to make it really short. Which I can. We can make it really short. Should we do just one more? This, one's, this one is going to be a bit risky for me when I get towards the end of it. But in my opinion, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Okay? Uh, because, not because, um, be, I know God, so I know God's going to show up. But if you want God to show up, you have to step outside of your comfort zone. Because if you're always in the strength of what you can do, then it's what you can do. But, but we have to, and, and a lot of times God will use me as an example for people that when I call out these words, I, I'm, I, my batting average is going up, okay? But, but you have to know something, that every time I call a word out, it's, it's a bit risky, okay? Then you have somebody come forward, and then you get another word, and you call that out. So just know that I think a lot of times with the prophetic, we, we turn things into like, oh, that man of God, like the clouds part, Jesus appears and speaks, that's not how it works. We, we over mystis, like, mystify it. It's really simple in which the way God speaks. And I'm teaching my three and a half year old girl how to, how to hear. And she's hearing clearer than I am. So we can all hear God just like this. It's actually the role of the prophets, prophetic people, to release a generation of prophetic people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So it's not the role of a prophetic person or a prophet to just prophesy in a church setting. It's actually our job to equip you to hear the voice of God so you're doing it. Because the time of a man on the stage is, is ending, but God is raising up an army. The where it's going to be a nameless, faceless generation that is going to take over the world for the kingdom of God. So last one here. Um, I really felt last night, th this one's pretty specific, that there's somebody here, and, and don't just raise your hand right away, okay? There's somebody here that has lower back issues. I feel like the pain is there right now. And the pain actually moves at times in your lower back. It's linked with a left leg that is just not very comfortable to live with. So your left leg's been giving you trouble. Um, it's, it's linked a bit to worry as well, but not, not, not as much worry. Um, but there's worry, there's uncertainty that's linked with this. And then I saw this picture last night of a sheriff star, a star, like a sheriff star. Now, that might mean something to somebody. Um, I don't know. That might mean nothing at all. Maybe I've just watched too much Sheriff's Cali, and I was thinking about my daughter. But I saw that, and I felt like I should bring that up. So is there somebody here with lower back issues, left leg, and, and there's pain there in, in your lower back right now? Anybody? In the back back here? Say that one more time. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Right leg. I'll take it. Come on up. Let's pray for you real quick. 
But, but there's pain in the lower back as well? Okay. As he limps up here. All right. Go to green. I also had um, on this, which is interesting, I have I had a left hand as well. Is there anything going on with your left hand? If not, it's okay. Okay. So right now there's pain in your back and the right leg. Okay. So sometimes for me it's it's a mirror image. So when I stand and look at somebody, it's my left leg, so it's their right. So I'm just trying to hear the voice of God. So you got to understand this that that not all the time you hear right, but you're practicing hearing the voice of God. You follow me? It's not about me or my words. It's not about you or your words. It's about God showing up and healing your body, which is amazing. It's all about you and your freedom. Has there been something specific that you've been worried about? Or, yeah? Okay, can you explain that to me? Okay. Okay. So the sheriff badge really, really meant something to you. Okay. Can you guys? Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, let's do this. Can everybody reach their hands forward? What was your name? Stephen. Stephen and, and, and David. A few other ones that have a lot of faith. Come up and lay hands. Come right on up here. Yeah, you got faith. Sorry, the one that was playing the piano. Susie, can you come up and pray with us? We're just going to pray over you and ask God to bring healing into your lower back right now in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you so much for this man. We ask, Holy Spirit, as you have called him out today, and, Father, those words meant something specific to him. Father, we ask that you would come right now by your power and your strength and set him free and also heal his lower back and his right leg. Right now, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, I need you to try, try your back out a little bit. Tell me how it's feeling. If you're feeling anything at all. It still hurts right now. So can we pray one more time? Okay, if Jesus prayed twice, I can pray a hundred times. Right? You guys are a great church. All right. So everybody reach your hands forward. Now everybody open your mouth and just begin to pray. Okay, everybody begin to pray. Everybody use your words. feeling as we're praying is your is it is the pain loosening yes okay yeah. all right so I feel so the pain he said that he feels like like electricity shock wave going through his body which is a good sign that's the power of God and so right now we're just going to release a prophetic word so just keep praying okay I just really sense that God is bringing you into a season of clarity that where there's maybe been confusion at times and direction on where to go and what to do, that God says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, and he's bringing you into a season of clarity and direction and purpose. So, Father, we prophesy that over our friend, and we speak clarity over his mind, clarity over his heart, and healing over his body, that peace would be about him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, man. Thanks for coming up here and letting us pray for you. Come on, man. God is good. Amen? Oh, I love Jesus. You know, Jesus worked miracles and then he preached the gospel. You know, the gospel void of the miraculous is our own attempt. gives out can I pray for you right after service would that be okay I'll do it right after service okay right after service I'll pray for you okay so let's jump right into this you guys ready you guys have your Bibles 
Okay, we're going to do this quickly. I really feel like this is a word specifically for you guys. So open your Bibles to the best book in the Bible, the book of James. Right? You got to love that one. Open up to the book of James. We're going to start in James verse 2. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to read this just so it's in context, but I'm not going to get caught up and preach another message out of this. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given, and it will be given to him, but let him who asks in faith with no doubt, but let him ask in faith, verse 6 is what we want to hammer on, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. I feel like that's, that's a scripture that Reset Church needs to just write down and really begin to dig into. James chapter 1 verse 6, really right there, that we would have faith, consistent faith. God is a good father, amen? And God being a good father teaches us lessons just like I teach my daughter's lessons or you teach your children's lessons. And God really likes to drive home a point with me on lots of different things because he because he's a loving father chelsea and i in our life have lived by faith okay now most of the time when somebody says they live by faith it means they have no job okay now through through my process through chelsea and i's process i've had side jobs and jobs here and there okay but but I've, I've lived by faith with my wife. Every time I, I was weak and wanted to give up on the call of God in my life, my wife would say, no, you will not go and get that job that will lock you down and not allow you to travel. So I would live by faith. God would open up opportunities. I'd work with construction guys that would be flexible with my schedule. But we really lived in a season of faith. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this. When I went to Bible college, before I was married, I had one dollar in my pocket. I walked in, Glenda Mom and says, you need to have $500 by this day. I said, that sounds great. But she says, I know you're supposed to be here. So we'll take your one dollar. So I gave my one dollar. I go to work that day at a, at a pressure washing company. My boss says, so Chris, how's, how's school going? It's going great. How's, how is uh, your tuition going? It's going great. How's your tuition going? It's going really good. How's your, t three times, four times. Oh, I just registered with $1, but God's going to take care of me. Pulls out his checkbook, writes a check for the entire thing. <laughs> Lived by faith because I didn't have any other option. God teaches you faith sometimes through the trials that it talks about in the first part of James. Uh, I was given cars. Okay, People have given me cars because there's no other way I could get to Bible college unless somebody gave me a car. So I was crying out, asking God, God, I know I'm supposed to go to Bible college, and then he provides the car. I, I travel all over the world. I get on airplanes with no money. I get off airplanes with no money. All over the world. Every time, it, we'd be a couple weeks or a month before, I'd say, God, I don't know how I'm going to go there. It's on the schedule. I have things I'm supposed to do. And God would miraculously provide the money. I'm going somewhere. Whenever I would work side jobs, he would always pay me too much. Most of the time, my wife and I would have no food in our refrigerator at all. We would live by $20, $40, $60 for a five to six to seven to eight year time frame. Okay? Maybe, maybe close to seven years. We lived with $20, $30, $40, give the money away and the money would come in. But we were in a place where we had to have consistent faith. Okay, catch what I'm saying. And then there was times when I would be in Japan and, and God would be showing up in these clubs and these club bosses, which you guys have heard those stories, the Yakuza stories, uh, where we'd be preaching the gospel and God's showing up with these gangsters. 
and, and, and they had taken an offering for me at the Japanese church, which is about 20 people, and it was about $20. And the pastor gives it to me and says, we're so sorry. Uh, we want to do more, but we really can't. We're all tight right now. And as I'm leaving from Tokyo, a Japanese club boss hands me an envelope with $2,000 in it so I could pay for my bills and buy groceries when I got home. So I've lived, and, and I could tell story after story from, from living in that season of faith where God showed up consistently, okay? And there's seasons like that where we have no other option. But then we move into seasons when God begins to bless us and we can lose our consistency. Let me explain. Through the transitions in life, Chelsea and I, over, over the last two years, about two years ago, we transitioned into pastoring at the Promise Church, okay? Through that transition, they gave me what is called a paycheck. It's called a salary, meaning I get the same amount of money every single month. And I, that, that's just crazy that I, that I get that. I, I'm still in, in, in shock that that happens, okay? But through that process, I want to make sure I read this right. But through the transition of life and becoming senior pastor of the Promise Church, we got a paycheck, a paycheck that was consistent. My question today is, what consistency are you trusting in? One that is locked or one that is open-ended? This is my question because when we move into season of blessing or when God begins to provide for us, we can get, get comfortable, okay? And then God sends Chris in to go, let's not get comfortable. Let's stay consistent and begin to be expectant for God to move. When I, when I started out at the Promise Church two years ago, um, I, got, I got a big paycheck of $1,600. Now, to some of you, that's not a lot. To me, that was like a million dollars. And then I got a raise, a little raise to about $2,300. And I remember sitting in my office journaling, talking to God, going with my pen writing, God, thank you so much for the abundance and more. When I got to the word abundance, my pen ran out. I'm not joking. Pen ran out and the Lord rebuked me and said, Chris, you have no idea what abundance is. You can thank me for providing for you, but you don't even know what abundance is. So I have to make your pen stop working. This is what you need to do, Chris. You need to write, God, thank you for providing for my family, but teach me what abundance is. Now, this is not just about finances today, but God uses finances to teach us about the supernatural. That we need to be consistent in a lot of different areas in our life. And my question is, what consistency are you trusting in? One that is locked in the world system, a paycheck, or a, or, or a diagnosis, or a whatever, or are you trusting in the open-ended blessing of God? Amen? Does that make sense? Is this resonating with anybody? So this, this last week, um, Chelsea and I were working over our budget. And my wife said to me, we have a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Chris, and she has no clothes. It's just last week maybe two weeks ago. I said, okay, so I start looking at the budget. I'm figuring out what we have to do, where we're going to go, what we want to do. And I'm going, honey, we don't have any money for clothes. Now, if you ever have a three and a half year old kid, uh, they run through their clothes really quick and they grow really fast. So where dad says they're fine, mom's saying they're not fine. So I said, honey, we're going to have to wait till next month. And I'm sitting on the couch and I hear the Holy Spirit whisper to me and say, hey, son, What's going on? Where's your faith? It's a true story. It just happened. So I said, Lord, I repent for being locked in and not expecting for a miracle because I'm trusting in the consistency of my paycheck, not in the consistency of my God. And God, you've taught me when I've had nothing for moments when I have something. You got to catch this because God wants to explode reset church but God will only explode reset church if we have consistency and expectation to believe for more when I stand here I see two services 
packed full. But we can get comfortable with Sunday by Sunday by Sunday. And I know what's inside of these two is two services packed full. Why do we want two services packed full? Because that's two services of people getting impacted by the kingdom of God that are going to go out and set Marysville free. But you can get comfortable and fall asleep in the comfort of, I love my church. It's great. I love that it's, you know, it's just perfect. It's, you know, God bless our little church. You don't have a little church. You have a big church. Forgive me. You, you get what I'm saying? But God's eye is he wants this thing to explode. And he has to get in the hearts of the people, not just the pastors, an expectancy to see growth happen. And that happens in all areas of a person's life. That when the congregation gets it, the church explodes. So what's happening in Woodland, we've been trying to convince our church that obedience is fun. Obedience is fun. You hear that word obedience and you think, oh, that is the most least fun thing ever. No, obedience is just a bunch of no's. But we've convinced them that obedience is just a big yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That was awesome. That was, we just wanted to baptize that step. Thank you. Um, obedience is a big yes to God. So as, as the people begin to catch the vision of the house, the house began to grow. As you begin to catch the vision and begin to get an expectation to get behind your amazing pastors, the house prophet is going to begin to grow. That when you begin to believe in what God says over you and the promises of life and you begin to protect the promise, the house begins to grow. Because you believe not in information, but in transformation. And then every person you're around says, I don't know what it is about you, but I want to come to your church. And I want to be a part of what you're a part of because you actually expect things to happen and then they happen. Sorry to preach. That was fun. We, my Bible has been baptized. It's okay. I don't need it. We'll just throw it right here. Okay. Different areas, oh, so the rest of the story with the clothes, right? We better finish that. So we, we repent, Father, forgive us for being, uh, for being small-minded. Even though you're blessing us in a small way, we know you have more for us. So I go and I speak at this youth camp, and as, as we're at this youth camp, this person comes to us and says, God told me to give this to you, and hands my wife $300 of Kohl's cash. A couple days after we prayed. And God says, like David told me, God was confirming the expectancy. He was teaching you a lesson, Chris. And that if we begin to let the expectation arise in our life, we're going to see God do amazing things. But we've got to be expectant and we've got to stay consistent. Okay? Areas in our life that we need to keep consistent. Evangelism. Okay, that's one that, Chris, you see all these amazing things happen around you. At, yesterday when we were at uh, Winco, God showed up. Then we went to a restaurant and God showed up. And then we went on outreach and God showed up. I've stayed consistent for 11 years and I've tuned into that part of my life. We can have certain areas in our life where God is Lord and other areas where he's not. Let me explain. Finances, health, our marriage, our children our church and the church growth or expecting to hear God's voice, God's voice daily so that we can have certain strong points where maybe it's prayer, maybe it's healing, maybe, but God wants us to be expectant in all things. You follow me in finances and health. There's some of you that your finances are great, but your health isn't. And God's saying just as expectant as you are in your finances, be expectant about your health. And maybe there's some that their finances are good and their health is good, but their family's falling apart. And he's saying, the expectancy that you have here, have here. Or your marriage or your children, what are you believing for? Stay expectant. Trust God. It's not a religious trust, it's a knowing trust. Amen? Next scripture. When they came to the crowd, this is Matthew 17, 14. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. 
Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire and, and, or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Your un and then Jesus says in verse 17, you unbelieving and perverse generation. Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? He said that in a nice voice. Okay. Remember that when you read scripture, Jesus always spoke with a good tone of voice. Okay, it'll help you read scripture better. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Unless he's in the temple. He was angry. Uh, bring the boy here to me. Jesus then rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples, the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, I don't know about you, but that's confusing to me. You have little faith. And then he says, just have little mustard seed faith, and you can move mountains. Have you ever thought about that? You're going, God, what are you saying? So I went and I read it in a bunch of different translations to figure out what he was saying. He was saying, you have inconsistent faith that if you would have consistent faith even if it's small you will move mountains we need to keep consistent faith and it can be small weak simple faith but with that faith, we will move mountains. Now, in this story, we could go a hundred different directions, but I want to I look at a, at a piece that we don't normally look at. I want to look at the, the, the father who brought the son, okay? What did the father do? Number one, the man came. Come on, catch it. The devil can do a lot of things, but the devil can't keep you from coming to Jesus. You got to catch that. So number one, the man came. Number two, the man, it says, knelt down and humbled himself. Come on, this is a word. This is a good word. So the man comes, the man kneels down. And then he confessed Jesus as Lord. So he came, he knelt down, he confessed Lord. This is huge. And then he confessed that he had a problem. You know, a lot of times we can't get set free from things or see breakthrough in things because we don't even know that we have a problem. You only get set free if, or, 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 or grow in faith if you know that you have a problem. You follow me? So he came and he confessed, I have this problem. And then he said, I tried something else, but it didn't work. This is an impossibility. So I've tried something else. I've looked over the budget, and the budget isn't working. I've looked over this, and this. I, I brought my son to your disciples, but it didn't work. So I'm coming to the source. You follow me? I love this. And then the Lord took care of it. In our life, oftentimes, we look at faith as Hillsong Band and Bethel music behind us, we have this emotional moment where it's just like, oh, yes, God can do anything. And, and it's a feeling. So it's actually just, if you can follow me, it's faith in your own faith. It's, it's a feeling. But I'm telling you that accurate faith is what this man did right here. Number one, he comes to Jesus. Number two, he humbles himself. Number three, he confesses Jesus is Lord. Number four, he says, I got a problem. Number five, he says, I've tried every other option and this impossibility will not move. That faith, oftentimes we think that great faith, man, Chris, you have great faith. Man, you, you just move mountains when you speak. Well, no, it's because I have great weakness. That actually in weakness is where the greatest strength comes. That's why Paul says where there is weakness... There is the greatest strength. It's no longer I who live. It's Christ who lives in me. You follow me? You guys doing all right? I'm going to wrap this up, okay? A lot of times we look at what Jesus did, 
But let's look for a moment again at what the father did. We've got to catch this. We've, we've got to catch this. We, we, we've got to see this one more time. Pride does this. I don't have a problem. I can take care of it myself. This is what pride does. Pride is this. Doing it in your own strength. Being self-righteous. And having your own wisdom. Okay, and we can't spend a long time on this. But pride is doing it in your own strength. Your own wisdom. And your own self-righteousness. Meaning your own works. So we... We, we try to strong arm things, and it's not having consistent faith. It's having faith in our own faith, or faith in our own works, or faith in our own, and we don't see mountains move. But we've got to look at what the Father did. The Father came, and he went low. That every time I travel and speak, or I'm on the street, I am in such a place of weakness, saying, God, you have to show up. Or you got to show up because it's going to look really silly. I mean, you got to catch this. That in weakness is found the greatest strength. That's why Paul the Apostle says, I'm no different. In 2 Corinthians 12, he says, I'm no different than the super apostles, comma, but I'm nothing. That we've got to catch the tension. That faith, and some of you need to be, be released from this thought, that faith is, man, I'm going to muster up this courage. No. You're going to admit your weakness. And then you're going to come into Christ, and Christ is going to use you so Christ can get the glory. you got to catch this, because if it's your own strength, you write a book about what you've done, people read your book and they don't get freedom. They read it and they go, these are great, these are ten great points, but there's no freedom in it. And it says there's people that offer freedom, but yet they themselves are bound. So we have a bunch of people that we're, we're running through, trying to find our freedom, and Jesus is saying, run to me. Come to me. Lay down your strength, your self-righteousness, and your wisdom. And I will make you something that you cannot make yourself. So what did I do? I came to God. I said, God, listen. Number one, I'm coming to you. Number two... I'm kneeling down and humbling myself. I can't, I don't have the money to do this. Number four, number four, I'm confessing that I have a problem. And I've tried everything else. And then great faith comes out of that. You guys catch that? The greatest strength is found in the greatest weakness. And the greatest weakness will look really big and faith-filled. But God wants you to be weak so he can be strong, so that he will get the glory. Why did he take Gideon and Gideon's army and work it down to how many? 300. That was great sign language, bro. You need to travel with me. 300. Why did God choose Woodland Washington and the Promise Church? Because he's going to get the glory. He's going to get it. We want God to get the glory. Why? Because if God gets the glory, people get God. If you get the glory in your own strength, and your own budget, in your own ways, which budgeting is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Budgeting's good. But, but if it's all on you, people get you and they don't get freedom. Amen? Okay, last scripture here. This is like the, the big, it's red on my, on my iPad. This is the one that I feel like is for you guys, all right? And, and Jeff was, Pastor Jeff was even preaching it in, in, in the worship close. He said, we need to start asking. This is the word that God gave us a couple days ago. Matthew 7, 7 says this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives... The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Now we need to up our asking. 
There's another story, I'm not going to read it, in Luke 18 about the persistent widow. And it says, this unjust judge, because of the persistency of this widow, said, you know what, you're driving me nuts. I'm just going to let you have what you want. How much more a loving father. We need to begin to tap into the expectancy and the asking. If you're not asking for something, you're not going to receive it. You won't. You won't receive it if you're not asking for it. I've been asking for my two daughters to have an encounter with Jesus. I've been asking and contending and working for it. At the beginning, about a year ago, it was a fight to get my two and a half year old to settle down and to read the Bible with me, kids' Bible, and to hear God's voice. I'm going to end with, with this story. It was a fight. Now at three and a half, she runs into her bedroom. She jumps on the bed. She gets her Bible out where she thinks that Moses is Jesus. I'm trying to say that Jesus was younger than Moses. That's Jesus, Daddy. And, and I'm beginning to teach this girl because I've been asking God. I've been saying, God, how are we going to do this? Oftentimes we think of asking as this. Um, God, I'm asking you to take care of this problem for me. And God says, no, I want you to ask how to take care of that problem. Like, I'll give you wisdom. Go back up to James. If you lack wisdom, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. How are we going to deal with this? God will mature you into these things. So anyways, uh, Ellie, j just a few days ago, this is what I do. I say, I read the Bible, and the Bible says, your young men and women, they're, they're going to prophesy. They're going to see visions, and they're going to dream dreams. Well, my, my daughter's not old, so she's going to see visions. Okay? So I'm teaching her at three and a half to see visions from God. So I have her close her eyes. She goes, I don't know if you've seen this. It's great. I was on the phone with her the other day. Hey, honey, just yesterday, what's Jesus saying to you? She stands there for a minute. Jesus just said he loves everybody. <laughs> Bye, Daddy. I'm, I'm being serious. So she's in bed. She's, she's closing her eyes. And she, she closes her eyes and she goes, Jesus, if she was here, I'd do it with her right now. Show me a picture. And then she just sits there. And then I say, what do you see, honey? She says, I see a giraffe, Daddy. I see a giraffe. It's got a long neck, and I see fresh green grass. So I thought, she must have seen something. The next three nights, she tells me the same three things. Giraffe, long neck, and fresh green grass. She tells my wife, when my wife puts her down one night, she sees a giraffe eating fresh green grass that will never die. Okay, so we're starting to go, okay, God, you're saying something. So I go and I look it up, and, and I start to read about giraffes. Now, giraffes are a herd animal. They travel with four other animals, so they make five, five-fold ministry. The giraffe also has a long neck, so it's a seer, so it represents a prophet. The giraffe, when we were moving into a season of deliverance, is a lookout for the rest of the herd, and it can see the big cats coming from a long ways away. And when a big cat attacks a giraffe one time, it never does it again. Because imagine getting kicked with a, with a hoof the size of a dinner plate. It's a prophet. And she begins to tell us and prophesy about us going into a season of releasing seers to see danger. Then we look up grass, and grass is a picture of the Word of God. And the word of God will never die, even though it's trampled on, even though it's, it, it's beat up. It's whatever, it, it is the most invasive thing on the earth. Grass will grow everywhere, right? And then we begin to read that giraffes have long necks, and they can eat things that other people can't eat. So what are they doing? They're seated in heavenly places. They're getting stuff from God. They're seeing from a different perspective, but because I've been on a year-long pursuit of asking God to teach me how to raise up children in the presence of God, He has answered me to where now she prays for the sick at three and a half. She, she, she's just a little mini-me. And, and the only reason why it happens, though, is because I was asking, what 
is the Holy Spirit putting on your heart today to begin to ask for? Maybe you need to write a list. Don't get religious about it, but write down a list. Write down things. I want to begin to see the supernatural. I want to begin to, to see breakthrough in my finances. I want to begin to see health in my family. I want to be begin to write those things down and begin to ask. That the word of the Lord for Reset Church is ask. And he will give it because you're asking with the right motives. Because you have a good mother and a father who are leading you in the ways of righteousness. And this church has got to explode so Marysville will be saved. But it relies on those, the elders and the leaders and the, and the members and the visitors to grab a hold of a vision to see a city be saved. Are you asking for your city? Are you asking for it? Because if you're not asking for it, you're not going to receive it. It says, ask for the nations, and I will give them for you. It doesn't say pray for them. It doesn't say speak to them. It doesn't say try to rescue them. It says ask for them. Come on, you got to catch this. That God is asking you to begin to ask for Marysville. Can you see, can you see this church in two years, three years, five years? I can see it. I can see it. I, I, I can begin to ask for those things. And I just felt like God wanted to deposit today, this morning, faith in your heart to begin to be expectant. Does anybody feel encouraged? Sorry, I got a little bit excited. Whew, at times I get excited. Trust me, it's not me, it's him. Can I hear an amen? All right, I'm going to pass this mic off. Um, I wish I could keep preaching for like three hours, but... We need to eat lunch, and, you know, I mean, I live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, not bread anyway, so I fast for, you know, weeks, months at a time. I fast one time every day, the same as you guys when you go to sleep, you know, fast a long time. You guys are amazing. I hope that you got something from this. I hope I was able to communicate the heart of God to you guys. I'm excited to come back and spend time with you. So excited about what your outreach teams are doing. Keep it up. God bless you. Here you go, Bishop. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Chris. Come on. Amen. How many are hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church? And those of you that have been to some of the, you know, behind the scenes meetings, <laughs> we've got stuff happening and going. So uh, buckle your seatbelts. That's all I can say is buckle your seatbelts because we're getting ready to take off like a rocket. Yeah. And again, it's not, it's not to make us famous. It's not to get our name out there. We have a purpose in the name of reset. The gospel is the reset. It's all about the gospel. It's about seeing Jesus exalted in our city. Will you stand with me? Father, we thank you for this great word to stir us up. And right now I ask for the nations. I ask, Father, for representation of every tribe, kindred, and tongue. Lord, we will not be satisfied until we see every tribe, kindred, and tongue represented here in this house and every house of worship in this region. Lord, we're looking for more. We're looking for your life to come and impact us in a way that radically transforms us for your love to come and fill us to overflowing, that we truly are vessels that have the rivers of living water flowing out of us. Father, that those rivers, though they may begin at ankle deep, would continue to go knee deep, waist deep, to become rivers that could not be crossed. You have to swim in them. We ask you to do more for your name sake your kingdom come and your will be done and father in the name of jesus i ask your shalom to be the portion of your people today that you would you would help them to live life to the fullest and prosper to the fullest in spirit soul and body i thank you for that 
In Jesus' name, and all the receivers said, Amen. Amen.